Is your theology about forgiveness a little bit deficient? Hi, welcome to today's Little Lesson. This is a special Ohio edition of Little Lessons. I'm blessed to be along the shore of uh, Lake Erie here. And it's a beautiful cloudy day and a nice calm day to do some uh, filming outside. We've been talking about, uh, is it okay to take a person to court in our previous two little lessons? They were actually filmed in, in Australia. And I could just feel during my last uh, filming of that last little lesson in, in, in Sydney, a little bit of negative vibes coming from some viewers. <laughs> so I thought, better explore this a little bit more deeply because we were you know, working our way through the Sermon on the Mount. We're here in Matthew chapter five, where Jesus said, do not judge, you know, lest you be judged and so forth. And, and some folks focusing just on that verse have come to a conclusion. And, it's dangerous coming to conclusions when you focus on one verse. You know, every verse in the Bible needs to be interpreted in light of all the rest of the verses in the New Testament. Jesus did not give uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount in a vacuum. Uh, he gave it in the context of uh, the entire Bible and in the context, of course, of the Law of Moses, of which he was the author, and, and through which he set up a court system whereby the children of Israel, if they had a dispute with a fellow uh, you know, Israelite, they could take them to court and be assured that they were going to get justice. And so for some folks, you know, they're making the conclusion that somehow God has changed and that's all changed and under the new covenant and, and now, you know, in every case, we just turn the other cheek and Jesus talked about forgiving, so we always forgive. Jesus talked about not judging, so, we, you know, we would never ever think about taking anybody to court and so forth. And, and I understand where those people are coming from, but I, I, I'm totally persuaded that their basic premise is wrong. And that basic premise being that you know, the Sermon on the Mount introduced some radically new uh, themes and, and variations on, on fundamental morality uh, because it just, it, it just doesn't fit into the rest of Scripture. In fact, that, that's not taught anywhere in the New Testament epistles that Jesus brought a radical new morality that all changed at the Sermon on the Mount. And so let's read what Jesus said in the context of everything else that Jesus said and not just take verses out of their context. So we've talked about the fact that God set up a court system so courts cannot be inherently evil and it can't be inherently evil to take people uh, to court for, for good cause as long as you know there are other factors that, that biblical factors that are followed and co come into play. Uh, we, we, we have already talked about the fact that Paul strongly reprimanded the Corinthians for taking fellow believers to court before unbelievers. But I tried to point out the fact that he wasn't saying that courts are inherently evil and that Christians have no place in court. Uh, Christians taking other Christians to a court that's that's presided over by an unbelieving judge or an unbelieving joy. That's what Paul was warning against and, and so grieved over in the Corinthian church. But he tells, he doesn't say don't go to court. He says, isn't there a wise man among you who can, who can decide? You know, aren't you able to constitute the smallest of law courts? You know, gather some folks in the church for crying out loud. The people who are one day, Paul says, going to judge angels, you know, can't they render a decision? So it'd be okay then to, to have court amongst the believers when it's believers having disputes with believers. Get someone who can arbitrate. And didn't Jesus say that when he said, you know, if your brother sins against you, go to him. If he doesn't receive you, get two or three, you know, and, and so forth. And if he doesn't receive you, go to the church. So he's talking repeatedly there about having court, as it were, in church. Okay. And I, I, I think that you know, the fundamental problem as the, as the, regarding the question I posed at the beginning of this little lesson is your understanding of God's expectation of forgiveness a little bit deficient. Here's where I think so many Christians are deficient in their understanding of, of our obligation to forgive. They completely ignore everything else that the Bible has to say, including Jesus, about the confrontation 
that would be expected and in fact even commanded prior to getting to the step of forgiveness. Yeah, sure, in Matthew 18. Your brother sins against you, go to him. You know, you confront him. If he receives you, you won your brother. Then Jesus said, if he doesn't receive you, get one or two others. Confront him again with some help. And of course, if you get two others, you know, they're gonna to wanna to listen to both sides of the story. They're not just gonna jump on your side. They, they wanna you know, judge righteously. And Jesus said, if, they don't receive, if the offender doesn't receive them, then take them before the church. And if it doesn't receive them, then let them be to you as a tax collector. Well, that doesn't sound like, you know, forgiveness, carte blanche, instant forgiveness, as some people preach and, and, and you know, advocate. <laughs> you know, it's not in there at all. It's, we want to work towards reconciliation, and the steps to do that are confrontation, repeated confrontation, increasing the pressure of the confrontation until there's no hope of any further confrontation bringing reconciliation. And if that happens, there's no requirement to offer forgiveness. The person becomes a tax collector or a Gentile to you. That is, you basically, you know, don't have any obligation to have a relationship with that person at all. There's no reconciliation. There's no forgiveness, okay? And so perhaps another aspect that we just briefly touch on in this is what about Christians taking non-Christians to court? Uh, again, Christians don't take Christians to court, but what if it's a non-Christian? Well, I would recommend the same exact steps. Go to that non-Christian privately, because that's what love would do. And if he doesn't receive you, then say, well, would you mind if we got some help? If some arbitrators here, you know, maybe you pick one, I'll pick one, and they can both pick one. That's the standard process on arbitration, you know? And let we'll go before those three, and that way we can avoid having to go to court, because I really don't want to sue you, because, you know, I, 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 I want to continue a relationship with you. I want, a, I want a fair settlement. I, I don't want you to be ripped off, but I don't want you to rip me off. You see, I just want fairness here because God is a God of fairness, right? Right. And so if, if, if that unbeliever refuses that, then yeah, you, you've exhausted your possibilities. Then all you can do is take that person to court. And now you're going to probably go before unbelievers. But you can still be Christ-like in all of this. You can still be considerate and kind and open-minded and, and humble in all of it. But God is a God of justice. Now, you say, well, what happened to the commandment about if he slaps you on the cheek? Yeah, 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 yeah. Little tiny things like that, you know, forcing you to go a mile, go the extra mile, sue you for uh, your shirt. Come on, it's almost comical suing you for your shirt she says give me your coat Sh mercy shame those kinds of people but when somebody you know does something that causes you know some huge infraction some significant suffering that's not a slap on the cheek that's not a suing of a taking a shirt right right so there's more to the Bible than just one verse. There's more to the Bible than just one Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Jesus is speaking to us from Genesis to Revelation, through the law, through the prophets, through the Psalms and the Proverbs. It's all inspired by His Spirit, okay? Well, this is a little lesson I've done the best I can do, okay? And uh, there'll be comments, I'm sure, that are negative and so forth. But I just want to tell you that I love you because that's the most important thing. And if you disagree, that's okay. All right. Uh, be at peace. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me on this little lesson. Hope to see you next time. God bless you.